welcome to this course right today we are going to be discussing about one of the most interesting scandals of this decade any guesses it is the kingfisher scandal and we are here to discuss about one of the most prominent entrepreneurs of i would say this century mr vijay malya when i say mr vijay malya a lot of adjectives will come to your mind right king emperor fun loving different 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 kind of adjectives right of late the king of good times has become the 9000 crore scammer how did this transformation happen let's discuss it but before we go ahead with that we'll first understand how mr malya reached the position he reached at the tender age of 27 mr vijay malya took over his father's business that is the ub group and became the chairman now at 27 when you become the chairman that's a lot of responsibility on your head but i think mr malya handled it very well and you won't believe he took the business from 40 crores to 6000 crores look at that increase right the business blossomed like never before mr malya then decided to launch the kingfisher beer now there was a lot of critics who told him that india can never become a market leader when it comes to beer business or liquor business mr malya said back off i will exactly do what i want and he started kingfisher beer and he used surrogate advertising to his advantage he used gorilla advertising to his advantage and today kingfisher beer is one of the most renowned beers in the business now how did he advertise right it's very easy making the product but in india compared to any other country it is very complicated advertising and i'm talking about the time when kingfisher beer was launched not today it was very difficult back then so he launched kingfisher calendar now what is the relationship between kingfisher beer and kingfisher calendar right these calendar as you all know right the 90s boys would know about kingfisher calendar basically it had beautiful girls models who had shot for shot very glamorously for these calendars right this was circulated and it got the attention of the entire population especially boys from the age group of 18 to 28 and that is exactly what mr malya wanted and through the calendar he promoted beer and trust me overnight people got people were aware that a brand like kingfisher beer existed thanks to the kingfisher calendar because those days it is not so easy today you have the internet and you have you can access anything you want to but those days you didn't have too many channels and mr malya knew this and utilized this to his advantage the next main thing that he named his house called as kingfisher villa so every given juncture he kept saying kingfisher villa kingfisher villa kingfisher villa again got the brand noticed all this took the brand to next level profitability in fact kingfisher beer was ranked one of the most successful beer in the world several times Through all this, Malia became the 40th richest person, and South California honored him with a doctorate. Now, what happened? Right? It was all about success, success, and success. And then there was the birth of the Kingfisher airline. Right? If you look at the slide that is projected, you will understand that Kingfisher airline was a premium class airline. Right? If you ask. any of the 90s kids about kingfisher airline right when they were growing up kingfisher airline was looked as a luxury airline everyone wanted to visit or wanted to travel through the kingfisher airline what made kingfisher airline so special right kingfisher airline first of all had the most premium facilities it was the first domestic flight to have in flight entertainment the food was mind blowing you had cuisines of all different different kinds of cuisines you named it and you had it The hostels were very, very beautiful. That was another very, very big reason for people to opt for Kingfisher Airline. And there was a video that came before the the takeoff of the flight, which said there was a disclaimer said that Malia came on that personally and said, "I have instructed my crew to take care of you like you were my family." This meant a lot. No other CEO or chairman of any airline business has come on video and spoken like this. All this did give a lot of sentimental value. and kingfisher airline was considered the most luxurious airline in the country and within no span it became the second largest airline in india which means that every one in four flyers traveled through kingfisher this was a huge success 
Kingfisher airline was so premium that the rich, the richest, the upper class did not look into any other airline. Their main, the only airline they, they focused on was Kingfisher. Only if they did not get uh, seats in Kingfisher, they would look into any other airlines. Everything was going fine. Then what happened? What really went wrong? Malia wanted to gain access to the international flying license. Now you must understand one thing. Airline business is a very tricky business. It's not that easy for all of us to get access to material or to license that easily. Right? Especially, generally, they ask you a certain time frame, at least about a few years, so that you gain experience and you can recover your costs. Kingfisher Airline in the domestic sector had not broken even. So there was no way that the government would allow them to get a flying license unless and until they use acquisition strategy. And that's exactly what Malia did. He went and acquired Deccan Airways. Now if you can look at the screen, you will see how in 2003 it was Air Deccan, 2007 it became Simply Fire Deccan, and in 2008 it became Kingfisher Air. Mistake, blunder. I'll tell you what that blunder was. Now, you're looking into two extremes, right? Kingfisher is the premium airlines known for the upper class. Air Deccan is the exact opposite of this. It was a low cost airline. It, it gave confidence to the lower middle class and the lower class that they can also travel through an airline. Let me give you an example, right? The price from Bangalore to Bombay, right? In Kingfisher, if it was costing you about 15 to 17,000, Air Deccan for the same sector would cost you around three to four thousand. That that was the price difference. And during a time like this, Malia should have handled the acquisition carefully, but he did not. Now, I'll continue with the same example. What Mr. Malia did was he said Kingfisher Airline right has acquired Air Deccan and has become Kingfisher Air, and I don't think we can travel or we can afford such low cost, it, it's just below my dignity. So therefore, I'm going to increase the price of the Kingfisher Air. That's the Air Deccan. So from three to 4,000, they increased that to seven to 8,000, right? So what Mr. Malay thought is they're going to pay a little more and come for this three, 3,000, 4,000 hike is not much. They're going to pay a little more and come here and it's going to be sorted and the profitability is going to increase. That was the plan. That did not happen. What in turn happened was the people who were paying 15 to 16 or 17,000 said, seven to 8,000, so much lesser because recession was there, it's better that we opt for this. They came down to this sector. So the Kingfisher premium customers came to Kingfisher Red and the original Air Deccan, that is Kingfisher Red customers, passengers decided to move on to other airlines like Indigo. Now, Kingfisher was at an all time low, why? The premium customers were paying a lot, are now more paying a lot. They've come to the Kingfisher Red. And the segment that was actually coming to Kingfisher Red have shifted to another airline, which is majority. That is when things were falling apart for Mr. Malia. Thereon, several crises happened. You know, first of all, he started taking loans to survive. In fact, the major drawback here was Bangalore International Airport. Right, the home airport of Kingfisher Airlines said, unless and until you pay landing charges in advance, we cannot allow you to land. So Malia was really stressed. So what he did, he said, okay, let me go and ask for help. So he went and he asked help from Qatar Airways, Emirate Airways, Etihad Airways. He almost convinced Etihad to invest in Kingfisher. But that time, the government regulation did not allow an FTI in the airline sector Therefore, Etihad could not invest in Kingfisher. If Etihad could have invested in Kingfisher, trust me, things would have been very, very different for us today. But that did not take place. Then what happened? Today, actually, Etihad is invested in Jet. That's a totally different story. Malia was seeing loss after loss. Okay, HP and Bharat stopped supplying fuel to Malia because of the overhead expenses. Now, Malia kept borrowing money. And after a point of time, it became so much that he was in debt. Now let's look at these figures. If you look at this, you will understand the figures, right? He has borrowed over 1,600 crores from SPI, 800 from PNB and IDBI. Now one thing, that the loans were just getting too much for any business to handle. So Malia said, I'm going to be utilizing my political cloud and do something. So he went, he was in Rajiv Sabha MP, 
he used his political influence and did something which was not really allowed, debt restructuring. Debt restructuring is allowed, but not for companies that are in this sort of a loss. What is debt restructuring? Basically, you're converting your debts right, into shares. He did that. In fact, the original price of that particular share was 39.9. He sold that for 64.49. In spite of that, the losses were not met. And it was the last help that the government could do. Malia was doomed. He did not know what to do. He just said, you know, I have to go to UK. He left to the exile in UK. But before leaving, right, he asked one thing. He asked the government and the banks, can he get a waiver of the interest? He's ready to pay the principal amount of 6,000 crores, but he cannot pay the interest. The banks rejected it. Good move, bad move. Now, if you ask me personally, the banks and the government might have had their own reason but when you know somebody is not in a position to pay, whatever they can pay if you accept it, it is still something because this money is the taxpayer's money, which is yours and my money, right? But the banks did not agree and Malia left. Now the laws are such that the taxpayer's money has gone in drains, employees are not paid salaries, people who've been working at Kingfisher have been affected. Mr. Malia largely still remains unaffected, except his brand value in the UK is okay and the laws are still not that strict that we can actually touch him in the UK. This is what happened to Kingfisher. What is the learning from this? Business, right, is a big risk. Unless and until you estimate the risks and you have strategies in place, you can't overcome. When you know something is gone wrong at the first move, either you take measure to correct that move if it doesn't get corrected, you come back immediately. Not wait for the mistake to get to a bigger magnitude where you yourself sink into that. Malia did that and we will be looking at different scams. But one thing to understand, management is very tricky. Business management is tricky. So through this whole scandal, what I'm trying to explain is how risk can be handled. And if you do not handle a risk well, what will happen? Right. Thank you and see you in the next class.